Welcome to the next small tutorial. Uh, this time I'm going to show you how to enable a couple of different websites uh, using port numbers as the differentiator. Okay, so uh, what I've done, if you're following this in order, uh, the previous video that I just finished uh, had multiple IP addresses, and what I've done is I've gone through and I have removed those now. So I've only got my 192.168.68.12, and I've enabled all the sites, and I've put everything back, so everything's got a star colon 80. Okay, so um, if you didn't go off and follow the tutorial about different IP addresses on the same server, that's fine. This is completely irrelevant of this. Okay, so now here's the situation. So if you remember, um, I've got a total of three websites. I've got the default website, I've got the blue site, and I've got the red, the red site. And everything is currently set up as an star. And of course, the way how the Apache web server works, uh, the request comes in, and all of the matching things uh, are considered, and if uh, whichever the first one is, uh, is the one that ends up getting picked. So if a request comes in right now for 192.168.68.12, uh, all of these sites would end up matching, or sorry, all of these virtual hosts would end up matching, uh, and because there's more than one, well, the first one that got matched is one that happens to be served up. So I would currently see the default site, which is what you're seeing right here. Okay, something else. Uh, if you looked at my IP, my IP uh, differentiator in the previous video, you saw I had to refresh a couple times to lose the cache. Uh, now what I've done is I've opened up the developer console and I've included this disabled cache, so that should at least make things work a little bit more as we expect them to. Okay, so here's what we're going to do next. Uh, I want to be I want to enable uh, multiple sites on different ports. Okay, now there is two steps to this. Okay, there are two steps to this process, um, and I can show you sort of officially. I think what you're supposed to do, and I will show you the shortcut that I'm often doing. Okay, but we'll, we'll leave my shortcut for the very end. Okay, now the first thing uh, begins with this. Okay, ss-nat. And if you remember what this does, this will list out uh, all of the connections that are currently, or sorry, all of the ports that are currently uh, being listened to. And you can see that there, there's a couple of them going on, uh, ss-nat. Okay, well, this is actually the one that I'm interested in right now. So this is the old, or this is the currently the Apache server listening on port 80. This one down here, this is in something called time wait, and that was from my previous work. If I had given this like a little bit of time, come back later, uh, this would not have been here. Okay, so if you don't see this one, it's not a big deal, but this is the one that's currently active. It's the one that's in listen. Okay, and what it says, it says, well, please listen on port 80. Okay, now, if you wanted to be able to serve up more than one website on the same server, uh, what I can do is I can give myself different port numbers for the different sites. Okay, so let me go over here and make a little make a little uh, table about what we're going to do. All right, here's what we're going to do. Okay, default, I have a red site and I have a blue site. Okay, now I'm hoping that you already have learned about uh, port numbers from someplace else, uh, but uh, port numbers, of course, are these small numbers that go between 0 and 65,000 and some. Okay, and normally uh, Apache listens on port 80. Okay, but what I'm going to do so that I can serve up multiple, multiple sites on different ports is I'm going to pick a couple of extra numbers that I'm pretty sure are not in use, and I can see that they're not in use right here. So the idea is that if somebody comes in and asks for a request on port 80, I'm going to give them the default one. If they come in and put a request on port 2000, I'm going to send them to the red site, and if they ask for something on port 2100, I'm going to send them to the blue site. Okay, so now, how do we do this? Okay, so there are a couple of things that need to happen. So officially, um, this is the approach, and then I'm going to show you what I normally end up doing instead, which is almost the same. Okay, first of all, there is a file in here called ports.conf. Okay, and what this is, this is a list of all the ports uh, that are going to be listened to by the server. And the way how this reads, it says, uh, please listen on port 80. And 
if you happen to have the SSL module installed or the mod G N U T L S installed, uh, then I want you to listen on port 443. Okay, that I'm going to talk about later. Okay, so if I want to listen to a couple of other things, what I just need to do is to come in and ask for it, listen on this port and also listen on this port. Okay, so that's going to be the first thing. Now, what I'm going to do is, yes, we're going to save this and I am going to do a system CTL reload Apache 2. Okay, so we have made a configuration change. We didn't make a change to the site, but we did make a change to the configuration file. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ss-nat, and I'm going to take a look, and we notice that there's a couple of extra things. So now you'll notice that not only is something listening on port 80, there's also something listening on port 2000 and something listening on port 2100. Okay, so well, let's go off and try it. Should that be enough? Okay, well, that seems to work. Now, how do you get the port 2000? Well, the way how it works is you start off with HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.68.12, or, well, as you know, you can just leave it out, followed by colon, followed by the port number. Okay, so if you leave this out, normally it hands up stuff on port 80. All right, and, well, that's a real drag. It actually seems to be showing up as something... Uh, it looks like it's still the same. Uh, it's complaining here about a favorite icon not being found. We can ignore this one. I just wanted to double check this. Okay, and uh, if I ask for port 2100, it also shows the same thing. And well, let's ask for something on port 2150. Okay, well, well, this one can't be open because there's absolutely nothing there. Okay, so what's going on here with port 2000? Why is nothing working? Well, and again, it has to do with the default site. Okay, and because it happens, there happens to be something with a default, uh, that's always going to be handed up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the sites enabled, okay, and I'm going to start making changes to red and blue. So let's make a change to blue.conf, and here's what I'm going to do. Blue.conf, rather than listening on port 80, I'm going to listen on port 2000. Okay, so save the buffer, and let's nano red.conf. Okay, instead of listening on port 80, we'll listen on port 2100. Okay, save it. Okay, system CTL reload Apache 2. Okay, so now we've got everything reloaded. Now if I come over here and I reload something on page, or sorry, on port 2000, I am now getting the blue site, and here I'm now getting the red site, and if I ask for port 80, or just leave nothing else, then that hands up my default site. Okay, so that's actually a fairly convenient way. And of course, there's no restrictions on this one, um, like what we had the problem with the IP address. So you can go and you can add as many port numbers as you want. Uh, the port numbers, of course, go from well, port number one all the way up to 65535. Uh, however, the first 1024 are kind of reserved for other things, so I'd recommend that you don't change them uh, with any numbers uh, smaller than that. Okay? All right, so sometimes you can use this if you've got some development, and this is what I use these extra weird ports for, is sometimes I will put some development uh, tests on onto some other non-normal site so that I can do some testing and it doesn't interfere with the actual main machine. Okay, So that's the official way about how to do this. Now I'm going to show you sort of uh, my typical approach about how I deal with this. Okay, and here are the changes. Very, very simple changes. First of all, what I do is inside the ports.conf file, I never actually put any extra listens in here except for listening on port 8. Okay, that's the only thing I put. Now, unfortunately, if you say systemctl reload Apache 2 right now, and you say uh, ssnat, uh, you can see that there's absolutely nothing listening on port 2100, and if you try to reload the page, it fails. Well, that's because we're not listening. Okay, even though I've got these entries already in the thing called sites enabled, you know, blue.conf, so you can see I'm already listening on these ports or sorry, I'm not actually listening on the ports, I'm simply saying if a request comes in for the port, and this is the thing that my students often end up getting mixed up with, they think that by putting the colon 2000, that automatically enables the port. It doesn't, it simply says this is a virtual host, if something ever does come in on 2000, and I happen to be listening to it, uh, then I would serve up the blue page. So often what I do is I put my listen command right here, because the chances of me having 
more than one site ever listening to the same port is pretty low. So I'm going to put my listen here and inside the red.conf file I'm also going to include my listen on 2100. Okay, because now the site is uh, attached to the actual configuration file. Now here's the great thing. So take a look at this. Uh, reload Apache 2. Okay, um, sorry, SSNAT. Okay, you can see that both of these things are back. Okay, so this is the red site is working, and the blue site is also okay, and of course the default is also working fine. But now here's the really cool thing. By including those files or including those listen commands inside the files, take a look what happens. If I say a to this site red conf and I say systemctl reload apache2 and I say ss.nat you can see now that my server is currently only listening to port 2080 so 2100 is gone because well I disabled the site so if I said a to end site red.conf and once again I said system control uh, reload Apache 2, and once again I asked for the list, you can see now that the port number 2100 has come back. So I find this sort of more convenient way because the ports, uh, I don't often enable them, but when I do, I want to be able to enable and disable the site sort of all at once without having to make two changes. Okay, uh, in fact, if you suddenly say, hey, I want to change the, uh, I want to change this port right here to port 2200, uh, right now, the only place where I have to go is to go into the red file, and of course, I've got to change it here, and I have to change it here, but that's more convenient and probably less likely to run some problems uh, than if you have to remember to go in and change it in the ports.conf file. So, uh, even though officially, I think we're supposed to be putting all of if our listens inside the ports.conf file, I find this is a very convenient uh, way of dealing with multiple sites on different ports. Okay, so that's it for now. Uh, the next part for dealing with different name services, um, that's actually going to require quite a bit of work because we have to set up uh, DNS servers first. Okay, so that's going to be our next thing. Um, so following this in order isn't going to quite work unless I've actually inside my roadmap put how to configure DNS services and how to use them.